everyone. It's James from Technical Topics. Um, today we're going to do a quick uh, review on some vehicle technology and initial diagnosis. I'm not sure whether we're going to get to a conclusion or not because um, it sort of depends what we find. But I'm going to take a look at a fault with a BMW 525 diesel uh, E60 uh, saloon. And this car has got a problem with uh, performance. So it's very flat. Um, it doesn't pull very well and it's come in for initial, uh, initial investigation. A quick, look, quick look around the system and um, there's nothing obvious uh, visually that, that wrong with it. So what we are going to intend to do now is um, go into the scan tool, look at uh, trouble codes and then uh, depending on what we find there, make a plan of action and try and see if we can work out what's causing this BMW some problems. Okay, so we've got um, the Autologic hooked up to the Datalink connector and we're going to just dive in there now and um, check communications with the engine ECU, see if we can see what's going on, uh, maybe choose some uh, trouble codes initially and see if we can make a plan of action based on the trouble codes. Um, we're just going to dive in there, get the model number and then we'll communicate with the powertrain uh, control unit which is the one that looks after um, the diesel system. Press the wrong button there, DME, Digital Motor Electronics. And within DME, we're presented with a list, as per most scan tools are going to give you the same list. We have a look quickly at fault codes. Um, okay, what we've got with fault codes are, we've got a bingo situation here. We've got uh, cylinder 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 glow plugs failing. Um, now that glow plugs failing on, on a car like this is an issue. Traditionally, we think of that as a cold start issue, but with... Um, diesel particulate filter and emission control systems actually they're, they're quite important for that system to function correctly as well so it's not just going to present itself as a starting issue with a clean set um, maybe the car hasn't been looked at you know maybe the customer knows that they're gone and has chosen to drive them like that we're not too sure uh, but as we keep looking down the list we've got three fault codes here uh, charge air tube monitoring idle speed charge air tube monitoring uh, diesel particulate filter Charge air tube monitoring means basically the pipe work that comes from the turbocharger through the intake intercooler. Um, that pipe work has got an issue with it, monitoring uh, monitoring idle speed and also then in part range by the look of it. If we go to the next screen, we've got uh, an airflow meter as a fault and also a um, particulate filter system as a fault. So essentially the poor performance... Um, could be and poor performance would mean it's sort of flat it does run there, there seems to be boost present but it just will not pull um so allying those symptoms that we've got with the vehicle with what we've got in terms of the fault code reader will help us sort of make a bit of a conclusion as to what we think is going wrong what we've got to think about with these fault codes then are symptom fault codes and uh, cause fault codes so what i mean by that is underlying if there's an issue underlying with the vehicle um that problem can manif manifest itself as other issues. For instance, if we restrict or block the exhaust pipe, such as a particulate filter issue, that will stop the engine being a good air pump, and then, uh, potentially, other monitors that live within the car's ECU, for instance, the air mass meter monitor and the charge air pipework monitor, may also um, flag as a, as a failure point. But nothing particularly wrong with them, but because the engine doesn't function as an air pump, the parameters that live inside the ECU with setting a fault threshold for those other components may well set them as a, as a symptom code. Nothing wrong, but they're also failing the onboard monitor. So in a case like this, we have to be careful that we go straight to the root cause, that we actually understand um, potentially the, the first thing we need to fix, because the issue with the symptom code is if we try and treat the symptom and replace the component or spend time chasing down a fault that is uh, as, a, as a consequence of another problem, we're going to waste time. So in this situation, we're going to try and uh, understand the root cause. Uh, really, that's about applying your technician brain knowledge and understanding about the vehicle and also looking at the system, the most likely thing you need to fix first. Um, and in that way, prioritizing the fix will then potentially, if you prioritize the initial fix, the symptom fault codes will disappear uh, and um, we will know we fix them because we've addressed the root cause. So in a case like this, um, I would suggest that we take a look probably next step uh, using the live data stream and we'll take a look at particulate filter pressure and we'll just see that the particulate filter is or isn't blocked um, by looking at the app from the particulate filter pressure sensor. If that one is, is in trouble, that's probably the first thing we need to think about before we go. We need to advise the customer obviously about the other issues, but before we go too much further, we, we need to just check to see if we can understand the true root cause of this problem. Okay, so we're inside the car now with the um, Autologic. 
and we're going to start the car up and just have a check out, check out this live data. We'll go to diagnostic requests and what you can see is we've got the, the data split into general, air mass system, rail pressure control and particle filter. And what we're going to look at is particle filter and if we dive in there we'll have a quick look at the um, live data stream. And here we can see the numbers that the scan tool is um, pulling from the engine ECU. Um, we've got um, two oxygen sensor, two sorry, exhaust gas temperature sensor um, inputs here in degrees. Then we've got our exhaust gas back pressure, which is the one we're interested in. We'll do a quick rationality check, and what we're interested in to see that is that that reads zero bar key on engine off, which is what we are at the moment. And that helps just verify that the sensor hasn't um, had some sort of issue with it. Initially, if you see the sensors with a malfunction, those um, key on engine off back pressure values are going to be um, higher than zero or lower than zero, depending on how it's failed. And that's a good indication then that we need to do um, effects and corrective action. At the minute this is reading zero, it doesn't mean it's not failed completely still. Um, but now if we start the engine up, what we are looking for is a back pressure value. And the back pressure value should increase in line with back pressure. So we're going to just start the engine up. And with it ticking over there at idle speed, we can see the back pressure. We'll just give that a second to, to um, steady itself. And um, what we're looking there is at 76, 77 millibar at idle. We'll make a note of that number and we'll increase the revs to about 2000. I'm going to just lean forward here a bit so we can see the rev counter. Oh, I can't see it there for a second. Um, let's have a look in this way. Let's get the revs up a second, here we go. And as we bring the revs up... So we're... just drop it down a bit. We're about... we're just around the 2000 mark there. We've got about 140... 150, yeah, around 150 millibar at 2000 RPM. And if we get the revs up high, and so on the limiter, she's at 450. Uh, so, what we need to do now is just check and see if those figures uh, look good, give us cause for concern, or allow us to move on. So, I'm going to um, whiz around to the data source and have a quick look and see what that suggests. So here we are back at the data source. I'm just going to show you now. Um, we're into diagnostic assistance, and um, this piece of software is useful for working out uh, all sorts of faults. Basically, we can click on this icon here. We're going to select the DPF fault, and in DPF, uh, it gives us three options to look at. One is learn about, second is carry out a test, and third is see a comparison. At the moment, we're interested in the learn about because we want to see if we've got any data on particulate back pressure sensor values. Um, when we click on particulate filters it's given us a section here with all the different elements and we're going to come down to differential pressure sensor and uh, this is the topic 8410 and in that topic it gives us a, an outline of the particulate filter sensor, differential pressure sensor um, and in there it's also giving us then a table of gas volume um, versus back pressure. Uh, and on this side we've got then a corresponding voltage chart should we want to get in there and measure it and it gives us some details about um, yeah, the component test, which wires which and what values we're looking at. Um, so what we've got some statistics <coughs> pardon me, from the car which I've written down. We had 70 millibar at um, idle value, we had uh, 150 at 2000 RPM and we had 450 at um, engine cutoff speed, about 4000, 4500 RPM. So along the bottom here, we need to work out the um, volumetric efficiency or the, the gas producing air pump, I suppose, would, 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 would be a good way of describing it, the air pump capability of this engine. So there's on the internet lots of calculators there, and we've got one from Boost Town, and the Boost Town one gives us um, a calculator that we can use to put in some, some vehicle details. So we can put in engine size, we can put in a volumetric efficiency, we can click, click, click calculate, and for the engine speed, engine size, a, a rough estimation of the volumetric efficiency and the boost pressure, it will tell us here the amount of air in cubic meters per minute. We've got a slight um, difference here because our um, table is giving us cubic meters an hour, so it's quite straightforward. What we need to do 
is we'll use the calculator and then we'll take this number here and we'll, we'll multiply it by 60 and that will make our data correspond to that which is in our chart. So if we look firstly 800 RPM, we can put the exact um, engine speed, uh, engine capacity in there or you can put in a, um, an assumptive value to 2500. You can put a volumetric efficiency anywhere between um, you know, 75 and 100. We've got a diesel engine here with um, sort of limited restriction. We may have a throttle valve, um, sorry, swirl collapse coming in. So we'll say 80% as, as a rough efficiency. We'll put a boost pressure in at zero because at idle with no load, we're not really going to see much boost. And when we put those numbers in there, uh, 80, 800 RPM, 2.5 litre, 80% in volumetric efficiency. It gives us a number of 0.9975. We'll kick, um, if we kick calculate, then we get our calculator out. And what we can do with our calculator then is put that number in there. So we'll do 0.997 uh, multiply, oh, sorry, 0 0.997, 0 0.997 multiplied by 60 equals, and that should give us our, if you can see that value there, yeah, we can see that there. That's telling us we've got 59.82. Um, we were reading 70 on our data, um, so we're, we're high at that first value. If we increase the revs, let's say we were now at 2,000 RPM, and we click Calculate, it gives us 2.49. So we put 2.49 in our calculator now. 2.49 multiplied by 60 gives us 149. The idea behind this chart is we can go in, <coughs> pardon me, and have a look. Here we go to the value. So if we said at 60, which is about there, our, our back pressure is reading up the side. So idle speed, two and a half litre engine with that volumetric efficiency and that level of boost. We're, we're somewhere between zero and 50. On this scale, I would say we're probably at 30 or 40 millibar. Okay, first thing, our technical data reading live off the car and we are making an assumption that the pressure sensor is reading good. Uh, we're way above, so we're, we're at 70, um, and that corresponds to a volumetric, volumetric efficiency of 200. The next step then, let's have a look at our data now. 2,000 RPM, 2.5 litres, 80% volumetric efficiency. We're at 2.49, which then gives us 150. Back to our chart, 150 uh, cubic metres per hour. Um, if we follow our chart, okay, we should now be in the 70s, <coughs> maybe mid-70s. And we're at, 100 and we're at 150. If I do the final value engine cutoff speed, so if we put in here 4,500, two and a half litre, and calculate that, we've got 5.6, 5.6 multiplied, 5.61, multiplied by 60 to give us cubic metres an hour. We're at 336. And if I go 336, so halfway along that line, our output should be about 170 and our data that we got from the car was at 450. So what we can see, um, our chart is higher uh, and it's going much steeper. Uh, so if we could lay that on the top of here, if we printed the chart off and dot, dotted those numbers on there, we would see our value um, going above this line here. And what we can see on the chart, the blue line is it faulty, the thin green line is it with it empty and the uh, amber colour line here or the golden colour line is a bit the full. The data we've got from the car based on the live data suggests that it's way above that line straight away and um, initially that's suggesting that we have a blocked particulate filter that we need to um, try and do something about. Um, we validated in some small way the data coming from the back uh, exhaust pressure sensor. We may want before we get too excited to go and do a test but for now um, we've got a quick idea based on the data uh, that, that we've got a back pressure, a, a, more, more importantly, an exhaust pressure differential of a positive bias, which leads us to believe when we think back to our fault codes, that uh, the root cause of most of our issues here have to concern um, exhaust back pressure. Uh, our choice now is to validate that sensor. Uh, and if the sensor is validated, what we can then do is go down the exhaust pipe route and see you know, why we've got a blockage. Okay guys, I'm back on to the car now. And what I've done is I've just connected, um, this is the, the pipe work you can see under here is for the original pipe coming from the exhaust up to the differential pressure sensor. The differential pressure sensor here is now connected to a, another piece of pipe and that piece of pipe is connected to a 
uh, pressure pump and so what we're going to do now is I'm going to try and validate before I get too excited because this is actually quite quick and easy to do um, I've just connected up to the pressure sensor we're going to validate the pressure sensor reading um, it's much easier maybe quicker maybe smarter maybe lazier not sure what you would call it um, to be able to apply pressure to that sensor and then validate the serial data stream based on a real pressure applied versus what the ECU thinks it's seeing we can prove or, or disprove that that sensor is okay so next step is to return to the scan tool we'll apply a set pressure and then we'll see what the scan tool thinks is being applied and that way we'll validate the sensor okay so we've got um, scan tool data stream and we've got my pressure sensor here so it's basically a, it's a pressure sensor for testing coolant um, caps so what I'm going to do is apply a pressure here and we're going to try and get it to 500 millibar and at 500 millibar we're going to watch gradually as we increase that pressure and we're going to see we're about 250 there I keep increasing the pressure we're going to get to about 500 we might go past and if we go past I'm going to pull it back down okay and here we can see the pressure gauge reading 500 millibar and then we can see the pressure sensor itself is feeding back exactly 500 millibar well, more or less give or take I'm um, just going to try and zoom in where it's where it zoom so we can see the physical pressures at 500 millibar and the the sensors measuring 500 so that way we've sort of given it a rationality check so we could say yep the sensor is reading a true pressure value therefore we can trust the data coming from the vehicle to suggest in fact that there is a blockage after the pressure sensor pickup so uh, now we can formulate a plan about making corrective action okay guys that short video takes us through um, fault codes initial diagnosis um, some suppositions about what might be wrong then into serial data stream to check um, the data coming from the car then we refer to a data source diagnostic assistance to check that graph about where the data source was um, and then we went to validate the output of that sensor the sort of quick way with a pressure test just to prove that we knew what was going on um, that's it for, for this case study. I'm not going to push on through the repair. We've got to go back for authorization and decide what the customer's going to do. Um, but it was just a quick uh, little video to show you through, again, a small bit of the process, um, fault codes data, validating data, to give you maybe some ideas, a bit of inspiration, um, or a different way of thinking about stuff that you're doing in your own job. Um, thanks very much for watching, and um, we'll see you next time.